Hi guys, well today up for a review we have the new Fractal Design ERA ITX. We first got a glimpse of this case in a private meeting with Fractal in Taiwan last year and ever since then we've been eagerly waiting to take a look at it. And so the introduction of such a case in this type of form factor is quite a departure from what we expect from Fractal but as you're going to see that Swedish influence is still most definitely there. As the name suggests, ERA ITX is exclusively designed for the Mini ITX form factor. The intention with this case is to bring to market an enclosure which oozes elegance and which arrives in a multitude of different styles. Fractal is offering five versions, some with wooden top panel, some with tinted tempered glass. And so it should be fairly easy to find something you like. But regardless of which version you go with, the price is the same, so it's 150 in the US, 137 in the UK. I expect those prices to maybe change in the current climate, but uh, for a case of this size, it is quite expensive. Do bear in mind, we've got aluminium, we've got wood, so maybe it is justifiable, but all will be revealed in our video. And before we get into our review, today's video is brought to you by Corsair and their new A500 CPU cooler. This huge thermal solution is ready to take on both Intel and AMD platforms and is equipped with four direct contact copper heat pipes as well as two ML120 cooling fans. Those fans can have their height adjusted thanks to the slide and lock mounting system, making it possible to add in memory which uses taller heat sinks. For more info on the A500, be sure to check out that link in the description. So if we look at the front of the case to begin with, this panel here is fixed onto the chassis and it is aluminium in its construction. There are an assortment of different colours available for ERA and our sample here is the gold version. And from the top left corner there is this diagonal curvature which gives the design of the case a bit of character. And down the left edge we have some ports for connectivity. There is a power button, USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C, two USB 3 ports and a combo jack for headphone and mic. It is a bit unfortunate that we can't lift off that front panel without detaching screws because underneath that we have the PSU fan and it would just be handy to be able to get access to remove any dust buildup. Now depending on the colour variant that you choose, you may have a timbered base panel or tempered glass. On our version here we have a tempered glass panel which has a tinted effect. There's also a secondary option if you want to introduce more airflow. This panel here is perforated. Now there are no screws fixing this panel onto the chassis, instead it has some magnets which connect up to that nylon dust filter underneath, which in turn has its own set of magnets too. And so the top of here has the ability to house two 120mm fans, and with that we can also install a 240mm radiator if you wanted to introduce some liquid cooling. For the sides we have two very similar panels, both have perforated sections to allow airflow to enter into the chassis or conversely for heat to escape. Those panels require no screws to fix onto the chassis, instead they use a push to lock mechanism as this makes it much easier to get access to the inner workings of your rig. And you can see on the inside of those panels we have those filtered intakes sitting over the perforations, those can be detached and cleaned as desired. With those panels removed, we now have a view inside era, and you can clearly see that we have a completely unique configuration here in terms of the layout. The motherboard tray itself can only take mini ITX, which should come as no surprise. And we'll move in now for a closer look at how things are arranged. Now the power supply sits at the front of the case, and you can install either SFX or an ATX unit, since there is this attachment here for larger size PSU formats. If you do go for an ATX power supply, do bear in mind that this is going to reduce your ability to install a radiator at the top. Smaller ATX will allow the radiator to fit, but if you go over 170mm, then like I say, it's going to diminish your chances of adding in a 240 rad. Here we have an SFX unit which will allow for maximum compatibility. And just a note on the installation process, it is necessary there to remove the storage bracket and the PSU mount as a first step. You just need to remove some screws to achieve this. And you have to do that because both of these parts are going to hinder you getting the board into the case. And you need to remove the PSU bracket to fit the power supply and hard drive anyway, and so it isn't an extra step as such. Down at the bottom of the chassis we have two PCI Express slots. Those come with the metal covers with ventilation cutouts, and they use standard screws. In all likelihood you're going to be removing those anyway as most cars today take up two spaces. At the bottom of the case, if you have a single slot graphics card, you can install two 140mm fans and increase the airflow. 
As far as out of the box cooling is concerned, Fractal include a Silent Series R3 80mm fan which sits as a rear exhaust and that is the only fan that comes included. Now in terms of the storage we obviously have the ability to add in a 3.5 inch drive to that power supply bracket but taking that drive out gives us the option to install two 2.5 inch drives instead and Fractal provides this secondary bracket here which again can either take a 3.5 inch drive or two 2.5 inch drives. Okay, so next I wanna go over the clearance options so you can determine what hardware will fit inside the case. So for the CPU cooler, we have a maximum of up to 120 millimeter without the storage bracket. And with that storage bracket, we get around 85, 90 millimeter. Installed, we have a low profile Noctua cooler here, which as you can see is perfect for this type of design as it causes no issues. For the GPU, we do have a limitation here, which means that you can go up to around 280, 285, and that should cover a majority of cards on the market, making it possible to add in a high performance model, just like this RTX 2070. But do also bear in mind that if your card is wider than 125 millimeter, you may find it difficult to get that side panel onto the case due to the power cables causing an obstruction. And lastly, we usually measure the distance between the back of the mobo tray and the side panel, but cables aren't really stored here, and the gap is literally around five millimeters anyway. Okay, well that is the new era ITX. And so what is the verdict on this new case here? It is well designed, it's well made. And regardless of which flavor, which version you go with, the styling is top class. I'm just gonna go over some of the things that I like about this case and then perhaps some of the things which I believe could be improved in terms of my own personal experience. I love that they've included Type-C on the front panel. Most boards nowadays, which have been released in the last six to 12 months, have the ability to use this standard. And so it's pleasing to see it there and, and being able to be utilized. It has support for SFX and ATX power supplies. If you want to use a 240mm rad at the top, I would strongly suggest going for SFX if at all possible, as that's going to maximize your compatibility. It's also great to see different storage locations. We've got this additional bracket here for smaller and larger drives. And it's great to see that the top panels and the, uh, the side panels are completely toolless. Now onto a few things which I perhaps uh, feel that you need to keep an eye out for. If you've got a wide graphics card, then you may run into problems with this case since the case isn't actually that wide. And uh, certainly with our experience in the 2070, the power connectors are just about touching that side panel. Cooling as it is out of the box isn't that great. We've just got a single 80 millimeter exhaust and that isn't gonna be that effective. Whenever we've got just a single fan included in a case, I always feel that it's more favorable to have an intake supplied in, instead of an exhaust. This case is also priced at uh, you know, 150, 137 in the UK. Quite expensive for what you get, that's what I feel anyway. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments box below and also cast your vote in the top right corner. And so guys, that pretty much concludes our video today. A web review of this case is gonna be available, published on Vortez.net with the cooling performance for ERA ITX. And so the links for that will be posted on the screen and in the description. Thanks very much for watching today, guys. I do appreciate it. And I would also appreciate if you could subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I hope you are keeping all well in the current difficult times that we're all experiencing at the moment. Take care of yourself and I'll see you guys in the next one.